On Saturday, May 7, 2009, this 30-foot, two-pass gas cooler caught fire at a plant outside Borger, Texas. Once the flames had been extinguished, the plant manager puts in a call to Alan Jones of Fuzzy's Industrial Maintenance. Alan arrives on the scene and assesses the damage. He then accepts the challenge to rebuild this unit and get it back online because the entire plant is down until the cooler is working again. With the customer losing thousands of dollars per hour, the pressure is on to repair and replace this cooler as quickly as possible. So now the clock is ticking. Sunday evening, Fuzzy's truck arrives and they load the unit onto their trailer. It's tightened, secured, and transported to Fuzzy's facility in Borger, Texas. Monday morning, Fuzzy's team of engineers and project managers assemble and begin to formulate a plan to rebuild this cooler. The first order of business is to separate the two pieces. They take the tube assembly frame off and set it by the round tube building at Fuzzy's and move the lower fan shroud frame down to the fabrication department. Fuzzy's assembles two teams of welders, machinists, layout engineers, final assembly technicians, and field service professionals. For the next four days, they will labor long hours on both units. Working around the clock, they begin to strip away the round tube frame assembly to get to the headers. At the same time, they begin to remove all the melted aluminum from the frame shroud assembly so they can assess what parts can be reused and what parts have to be remanufactured. Here you can see the old spent tubes being loaded up and sent to Fuzzy's reclamation plant where they will be recycled. Now that the melted aluminum has been removed, the Fuzzy's team of computer-aided design engineers move into position and begin taking detailed measurements for the next step, which is to make CAD drawings, which in turn will produce G-code for Fuzzy's CNC machine shop. It's Tuesday morning, and the square box header assembly has been moved inside, where they can remove the old tube ends called Dutchman from the tube sheets. Some are pre-drilled, and then they utilize a pneumatic knockout tool, which removes the Dutchman from the tube sheets. Once this has been done, the next process is to repair the openings that were leaking where the fire originated. They are welded 100% closed, and then they're machined to the manufacturer's specifications. An ultrasonic thickness test and visual inspection is performed before moving on to the next step. In the meantime, new steel has arrived and is being divided up and sent to different locations for fabrication. The CAD department has sent out G-code to various production machines, which includes the AccuPress Shear and Break, the Wiedemann 5000 CNC Turret Punch Press, and VC8030 CNC Vertical Boring Machine. They begin prefabbing the pieces, such as these coming off the Wiedemann Punch Press. Then they'll move to the press break. All parts will be machined to specifications from the G-code CAD drawings. By Wednesday, all prefabbed parts have been moved to the welding department. Once at the welding department, they level, align, and weld the parts together using MIG and flux core processes to make up the individual frame units that will be used to rebuild this 30-foot two-pass gas cooler. Time is of the essence, but precision is key. Here, the two long, heavy-duty side channels for the tube assemblies are being cut to length. Then lengths of heavy gauge I-beam are welded across the bottom, connecting the two C-channel frame members. The frame for the tube assembly is being checked for squareness. While the frame box is being assembled, the next step is the Fuzzy's Fin Tube Shop. This is the McElroy Fin Machine, the best fin machine manufactured in the U.S. It can produce tubes up to 56 feet in length and is capable of producing finned tubes 5 8 inch OD to 1 inch OD from various tube materials. On this job, it's turning these tubes at 2400 RPM and laying down 10 fins per inch. Here you see the fin material entering the machine. Through several dies, the fin material is shaped then wrapped to the spinning tubes. 
It's Thursday morning, and Fuzzy's management is assessing the best way to start final assembly on the fan shroud frame. They're replacing all the damaged pieces and installing the new fabricated frame parts, a slow and tedious process. Now that the main outside framework has been assembled, then they can start on the inside pieces of each fan shroud box. At the round tube shop, the headers have been cleaned, welded, machined, and inspected. They're ready to be installed into the rebuilt tube frame assembly. The square box headers are positioned, leveled, and then welded in place on both ends of the tube frame. The new manufactured fin tubes have arrived and are being inserted into the tube sheet headers. Once the tubes are inserted and precisely positioned, they begin rolling the tubes. This procedure mechanically bonds the tubes to tube sheet by expanding the ends of the fin tubes. At the fan shroud frame assembly, they've rebuilt one fan support box that was destroyed by the intense fire. On the other end, all that was needed was to clean the existing fan support box and replace the bearings and shaft. With both fan shaft centers established, they start laying out the fan shroud opening. At the round tube shop, progress is being made on the tube bundle. The 12-foot diameter fans have arrived on scene and will be installed once the shroud boxes are complete. The new motors are uncrated and made ready to set into the motor housings. Tube assembly continues on and the final tube rolling inspections are completed. With the tube bundle frame nearing completion, the top louvers are installed. Friday morning, the fans are being hoisted into position and then secured to the shafts. The truck has been called back to location in anticipation of loading this unit up. Each fan is balanced, centered, and tightened into position. In the meantime, it's time to start the hydrostatic test to make sure the new fin tube bundle unit is not leaking. As always, at Fuzzy's, safety comes first in every aspect. The lower fan shroud frame assembly is placed on the trailer. The 22-ton crane now positions itself to perform the lift on the tube bundle frame assembly. Then the truck will back the fan shroud frame unit under the tube bundle. After a successful hydrostatic test, they drain the water and bolt down all the louvers. The crane now lifts the fin tube bundle unit up as they position the lower fan shroud frame underneath it. Once the truck is in position, then they lower the tube assembly bundle onto the top of the fan shroud frame. Then Alan Jones takes one last measurement to make sure the inlet tube is in the correct position. Friday evening, Fuzzy's crews do a final bolt down to the tube bundle frame onto the lower fan shroud frame assembly. They attach chains and ratchet it securely to the trailer. Finally, the flanges that were bolted temporarily are now welded in place. This unit is now complete and on its way back to the plant. The entire cooler was rebuilt and delivered in under a week.